Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Steel Sanctuary Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Rivero from SteelSanctuary.com, and this is my co-host, David Coro. Dave, what's going on? Hey, what's up, brother? Uh, Steelers signed three new players today, Dave. Um, let's start with the first one. Uh, Dean Lowry, a 29-year-old, six foot six, 300-pound defensive lineman. Uh, did a little research on him. 15 career sacks. He had a, 40, a whopping 47 PFF grade in 2023. That sounds like great camp fodder to me. Um, not someone to get super excited about, I don't think. And yeah, just don't even get excited. He's de- literally just just there for for camp. Literally. I saw he had 31 inch arms, which like was the one percentile, which that's exactly the opposite of what the Steelers look at. You know, they like the long armed guys in this guy. I yeah, it's literally nothing to even yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There's not much to be said there. Uh, another signing, Brandon Allen. We've got our third string quarterback. He's got nine career starts with Cincinnati and Denver, 10 TDs, seven interceptions. He's a third string guy. Uh, just another one. You're like, okay, whatever. They went and got their third guy, but that to me means they're not going to go after one in the draft. Yeah, I was going to say it probably, they like to go to camp with four quarterbacks to start. They do. So maybe they sign an undrafted guy or maybe Either, a seventh round guy. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> I think maybe in the sixth, if there's a Joe Milton that they maybe like yeah. because of the arm, you know, something like that, maybe then they'll they'll take a shot. But but this to me pretty much says that hey, that is no longer a priority anymore. Agreed. Uh, and the final one, and maybe just a slight bit more exciting than the other two, is Quez, Quez Walton. Is that Watkins. What? Watkins. I'm sorry, Watkins. Six one. 25 years old, 4-3 speed. That's something nice. Uh, only 142 yards receiving last year and one touchdown. I was, I was going to say, like, looking at it here, he only had six – his best year was 2021. He had 647 yards receiving, one touchdown. That's it. Yeah. But I, I, I think he's got four it, touchdowns total. Is it four or five like, in his career? I, I think I told you in text. Like, uh, this guy maybe could be a better Calvin Austin the third, maybe – yeah. I unless that's the goal is they want more speed that way you know they have you know bigger matchup problems for defenses with too much speed maybe I have I have no idea um were they done playing chicken with fucking Boyd who apparently wants you know I don't know how much the guy wants but he wants more than they're willing to pay so yeah. they're like done playing games they're like all right you don't you know you want to keep asking for a higher price than what we're offering Guess what? We're moving on. What happens to him? Because this is, we're already almost, we're a week away from April. And, and Boyd, I'm talking about. And he hasn't signed a contract with anybody yet. That's, that's, some, he's one of the some, top wide receivers in this class. Uh, some, some team will overpay for him, but it ain't going to yeah. be a Steelers. I can tell you that much. It's crazy that he's still out there. So, or he'll give in. Maybe, maybe his price will come down. I have yeah. no idea. The, the Steelers wide receiver room, bro. Yeah, I'm, you know, Quez Watkins. Van and, Jefferson and, and those guys Austin. do not and those guys don't play special teams no I was going to bring that up Quez Walker so, has like maybe 20 special team snaps right. in the last three years so He's like, not a, th- like this is going on here. this doesn't move the needle at all is the reality um none, none of these three do at, at all yeah so like I don't I don't know like like literally they have to draft a wide receiver in this draft it, they have it to do a lot of things they have to draft a wide receiver a center, a slot corner. They need well, a tackle depth. They and need... look, this is where I agree with you that the, the con painted himself into a corner here with the wide receiver group and and the center. Like it got away from two, them. I, it, did. it got. I agree. It, I think they bet on something. They gambled, and it, and they lost. <laughs> and you know that's that's what we're seeing here. Um, like literally, I don't know what they're gonna do. They're gonna, I mean, center, they really, really gotta draft somebody. At least a wide receiver, you have a one. Yeah. You know, like you have yeah. a one. We don't have a one or a two at center. Like we don't have <laughs> we've got a guy that plays all the positions that we could plug yeah. in there with Herbert, and that's it. So Tomlin mentioned him as a, an option. Oh, of course. Today. Yeah. That's his wet dream. Oh, a guy that can do guard and center yeah. and tackle and, and this, maybe he can even long snap. That's the kind of guy I want. That's Tomlin's <laughs> mindset. So yeah, I, I just, I definitely center and wide receiver. 
got to be like gotta be. there ain't no doubt first two or three rounds has to get one of both yep i agree i i, I tweeted this out earlier today this has been a very this could be this is a high variance off season and what i mean by that is this could go very very well or this could go very very bad with the moves he's made there is a world where russell wilson could shit the bed they could have no center of the season and this offense can completely tank the season or russell wilson could play great he could hit a home run with his first round pick at center dan moore somehow miraculously turns into a a competent left tackle and this offense is flying but right now dave it could go either way from what i'm looking at oh there's no doubt there's no doubt he has i agree i get the quarterback stuff has been great patrick queen signing was great but then you can't get away from the fact that this offensive line is not very good and they haven't upgraded it. They yeah, have like, no, this holes on this roster when it's almost April. This is, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I was really hopeful. I was really fired up over all the moves that's been made. And I was giving it time to, to fix something, you know, whether it be the center or wide receiver, and it just didn't happen. And uh, yeah, I, I think they really planned on Boyd being their number two. And it's not going to happen. Morris being and, their center, and that I believe yep, that I think and they, they both felt a miss on that when they thought they were going to get it, and then it was like, oh shit! And it, it the league just happened. Everybody else is doing their you know due diligence yeah. on guys and getting signed left and right. So I just uh, I don't know, man. It, it's it's not looking good in those departments. I'm really hoping that they nail these draft picks. Or you're right, we live in a world where if they don't hit on these picks, they're fucked, period. And I don't know how the way to put it. So, yeah, they're, they're going to have to hit on those two things. Um, and then when, I, when, when do they draft a tackle? Well, you said you did, some, you, yeah, I wanna, it, you said you did it, some work on this. Yeah. If they don't draft a tackle in the first two rounds. So here's, here's the thing. So <laughs> they can't wait past the third round. They can't. I, I would even argue that the third round's too late, but go ahead. Well, okay, and, and you may not be wrong because I'm going to tell you something right now. Just to give you an idea, from round three to round five – I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. From three to six, only one, two, three, five tackles were taken. In three rounds, only five tackles are projected in mocks to go. And it was three in round three. It was Christian Jones, Texas – Javon Foss out of Missouri and, and Roger Rosengarten out of Washington. They went in the third. And then in the fourth, only Blake Fisher out of, uh, out of uh, Notre Dame. And then it was Matt Klinglaves out of Pitt in the fifth. That's it. And so I've, if seen, they have I've seen the Notre Dame kid go earlier, a lot earlier. Yes, yes. He could go in the third. Maybe, I mean, I don't know, late second, that's a lot. That's People are saying second. I've seen some seconds too, yeah. So I, he could go. I'll believe it if I see it. But in a cab, maybe some teams value him higher than others. Yep. But uh, I'm telling you, it is dire after the third. They cannot, like, literally, they have four picks in the first three rounds. They better use one on a tackle. If they want to give, if they want to give Dan more legit competition with a guy that actually can be plugged and played, they better go in the first round. If they wait after, they're they're fucked. They they ain't ain't getting shit. You're right, Dave. And, and, I've heard a lot of people say this draft isn't very good after the first couple rounds. And while we see these deep positions like wide receiver and tackle, they're deep, but they're going to go. If, yeah. if you don't get a good, if you don't get a receiver in the first two rounds, it drops off a cliff. And the same thing with tackle, you're right. And the same thing with corner. It's a deep corner draft, but if you wait too long. So, man, I'm telling you, I, I see some trouble ahead for the Steelers because too many holes and not enough early draft picks to, to fill all these holes. You got to go center wide receiver one, two. So that leaves you with maybe the, what the 10th, 11th, 12th best tackle at that point, And then corner. Yeah. Like, like play all, slot corner. They got all these stud tackles in the first round and then some leak into the second. And then it's just a nose drop. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you, you, you hope you get a solid guy in the third round to compete with more. And then after that, Good luck if there's one there worth taking. Like Dude. literally, round three to six wasn't shit. A couple, then the third, you know, third had three, 
And then in the sixth round was when you could the offensive tackle start getting taken again. It was just like, good yeah, lord, the crappy, yeah, the, the, that's... yeah. So it's it's bad. Dan Moore's going to be the left tackle. That's a lock now. I, I th- there's no free they, agents out there. They might be gambling and they're going to go with him. Like I, I and with this close, the worst Dave, left tackle in the league. Uh, so I don't know how you do that. They, we're this close to Mason Cole being the starting center for the Pittsburgh Steelers again. With this, he's the next guy up on the free agent market. And if they if they crap out the the draft. They're gonna be begging Mason Cole to come back and play center. Yeah, it's it's that. It's, I'm I'm dead serious. It's that. Look at the center free agents. There's nobody. There's nobody. Yeah, and I, even tackles too. I was looking. Do you maybe roll the dice on Makai Becton, who's been kind of he was a uh, a high round draft pick, but he he kind of crapped out in New York. Right. He's he still was young, young, but he, maybe he's the only guy worth. Or is around? he another damn more? And now you've got two of them. Great. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Like. You know, so I, I don't know. It's going do you to be sit down and do like, do you do you do your prayers that Connor Williams somehow miraculously recovers from this devastating knee injury and can play, and you could sign I, him in May look, or I, April or May? I'm I'm praying to God that some team at the bottom of round one once pick twenty, and they swap picks with the Steelers and give them a couple more picks. I am praying to six pound baby Jesus that that happens. I really am. I really think that's the route they go to fix a lot of this stuff is trade down in the first, in the first round. So you still get a first round pick, just trade down and acquire a third, you know, something like that on top of it, maybe better. I'm just saying they need to do this. Like I really think this is the best possible way for them to still nail a center and take care of wide receiver and offensive tackle, and then, you know, whether they want to go the route of corner or, or whatever else, D lineman, you know, any of those things, then that's the route I would go, Dave. Honestly, I, I would trade down if they can. Don't yeah. trade out of the first round, but just trade yeah. down. It because, well, because, because I think if the projections are right, if they trade down in the first round, either JPJ or Frazier will be there. Like yeah. one or two of them will be there. So, and then your emergency backup is Van Pran. And so but, I, I just think it works out better for them to drop trade down in the first round, acquire an extra pick, and then you can take care of a lot of these things. That's what makes sense because they didn't go to, to JPJ's pro day in Oregon. So does that mean they're not taking him? I think so. So you're going to draft think, Zach but, Frazier 20 overall? Seems a little steep to me. I mean, coming off injury. But, yeah. But I agree. If you don't take them there, you're not getting them at 53, most likely. Correct. I mean, every, anything is possible. That's but probably... the damning thing of it. Yep. And then it's, like I said, it's Van Pran as your starting center. Or is it Mason Cole? Or a, I, you just oh. you just fucked yourself. I don't, I don't, I'm really like getting worried about this. And I was going to save this for later, but we'll do Mike Tomlin's, a little bit of Mike Tomlin's press conference later on. But one of the things he said about Arthur Smith and him was, we both have, you know, like-minded in offense, and we, we both want to rely on our bigs to dominate the game and go from there. And I started thinking to myself, rely on your bigs. Let's break down their offensive line. You've got the worst left tackle in football. What? <laughs> yes. Your left guard is good. Isaac Samuel is very good. He's going to be 31. Yeah. You have no center. We're relying on no. our bigs now. We're relying <laughs> on our fucking bigs. There's no center. Or if you do have a center, it's going to be a rookie. James Daniels, good player. He's going to be a free agent at the end of the year, but at least you have one good offensive lineman. And then you've got Broderick Jones at right tackle, who doesn't want to be right tackle. You're ruining the kid. And he struggled there. He couldn't pass protect on the right side. So this is, this is your strategy, to rely on your offensive line as the catalyst of your offense. Your offensive line's in shambles right now. It's they they have to be including Darnell Washington in this conversation. Oh, I want to get to tight end too. Your starting tight end can't block for shit. <laughs> yeah. Your backup tight end can block, but you, yeah. And, right. and and for the cherry on top of this disastrous ice cream, you just acquired two quarterbacks that were one and two in holding the ball too yeah. long. Right. Yeah. Tell me where this is leading, Dave. I, this is the fucking Titanic. I could email them the uh, these percentages of how long they hold the ball. Maybe they don't know. I, I can get it to them somehow. Just give me an email or something, a text message, whatever. 
maybe they're not seeing this stuff, but we sure shit are. So I don't know. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it too. Like, it's like, bro, this, I agree with you. Like, I don't. <laughs> Just when you yeah. break it down piece by piece, you take their strategy, relying on their offensive line. And you look at the offensive line. You're like, wait a minute. It's not the strength of the team. What are we talking no, about here? Not even, not, not even close. And then you don't have any fucking wide receiver. You got one wide receiver. So yeah. everyone's going to compact the box because you right. don't have anybody. Else. Now it's only much, whatever it is, 23rd, 24th, wherever day it is. There's still time to fix these things. They could 20th. still make a blockbuster trade for Ayuk and draft the best center on God's green earth. And then everything's fixed and okay. But as we stand right today, this isn't looking pretty. It's not looking pretty. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't disagree. I was pretty hyped up a week and a half ago and, and now I'm just like, man, this is not going very well. This is not good. But I, 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 I want to be hyped as fuck about, you know, having two, possibly two starting quarterbacks. But what good is it if they're like dead on the ground because nobody's there to block for them? Like, I, you know, I don't know, man. Like I, like I said, I don't. They're, they clearly like Dan more better than, than everybody else. Than but the what rest is, of the media in the league. How? I like, don't know. I don't it's, know. It's don't all know. there. Like, just. Just look at the stats. Just look at film. They have to be watching this. Like, I don't know how you're not. Oh, maybe they, I, they, I they like the run blocking and they think that the pass protection will come in time. I mean, Dan Moore has been, what is this? It's going to be his third, fourth year? Third. I think it's his third. It's going to be his no. third year. Is it his fourth? Regardless, we've seen enough of Dan Moore. I mean, Leopard doesn't change his spots. He's got a lot of starts under his belt now. He got drafted with Kendra Green, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever year that was, 2020? Yeah, this might be three years he's played. I should look it up. So we're not I that. think I think this is his fourth year. I think. I want to say it is. This will be his fourth season. I mean, we Phil- regardless, we've seen enough of this, right? We know what Dan Moore well, yeah. is at this point. I've had my fill of it. I had my fill of it two years ago. Yes, like, this I, is going to be – he's got – 49 career starts. This is going to be his fourth year. Okay. I thought so. He's not getting dramatically better at this no. point. No. This is it. We've seen Dan Moore. This is what he is. Right. And how this player takes precedent over a first round pick who you traded up for. This Dan Moore is, you can't take Dan Moore out. You have a first round pick. Whoever one said was a, like a franchise left tackle, but we can't put him there because we're going to upset Dan Moore. Who sucks? I, I'm. I'm. Get the whole. I. I agree. I. I would be done with more and just put Broderick back at left and be done with it. I would tell my first round pick, "Hey man, don't worry. We're putting you back at left tackle. Yes. We're we're done with this bullshit where we play you out of position. And right tackle, we're going to deal with the chips where they fall. But it's still better off than where you're at with Dan Moore at left tackle. I'm sorry. You can probably find a decent right tackle still. That's better than having. Broderick out of position at right tackle with freaking more at left. I just, I don't get it. I, I don't, hey, I don't get it. The move was to sign a veteran center. You sign a veteran center. Then you can use your first round pick on the best right tackle available. Then you're, you, you then you're in business. Then you can rely on your bigs. Sure. It's the, you know, your tackles are a little inexperienced, but it's better than Dan Moore and Broderick Jones out of position. Now you have to worry about a center. You're still going to get a right tackle. Oh, so we think. And you need a wide receiver, and you need just there's no slot corner on this football team. There's none. They have two starting corners, one 29 year old shitty corner, and a couple of question marks by Darius Rush and. and... But Dave, he's fast. <laughs> the more I think about this offseason, I'm just I'm I'm winding myself up. This is the same old Steelers, half assing uh, it all the way to the finish line. Yeah, oh. I mean. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable at all now. <laughs> I was feeling really good a couple weeks ago, and now I'm just like, yeah, I, I this know, isn't man. good. This isn't good. All right. What else happened? Um, the Steelers sent everybody and their cousin to the Michigan Pro Day. Uh, they had meetings with Roman Wilson, the wide receiver, and Mike. This is a guy to keep an eye on. Mike Sainstrill. He's kind of a slot corner. They, they had a meeting with him, too. Are you talking about the guy out of Michigan? Yes. Like Serenstini or whatever? 
Sandristil. Sandristil. I'm going to have to work on that name. We could be on this pod for an hour trying to pronounce this right. <laughs> they met with both those guys in the Michigan Pro Day. Um, so either or both could be candidates to be drafted. Roman Wilson's a pretty good wide receiver. Um, that's only like, what, what are we talking about? The fourth or fifth Pro Day that both Con and Tomlin have been to. So yeah. Oh, hey, real quick. Uh, Tanner Myers said on here, there's a small school tackle from Georgia State. They had in for a top yeah. 30 visits. Yes. Did you bring um, him up? I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't bring him up. I don't know if I brought him up on the last um, pod or not. Let me he look. said, so they'll take him late if they don't take a first round tackle. Yeah, but this kid's a, I, a, a, the kid's. I hope a, they got um, something figured a, out because. A project. He's not a plug and play. Right. And that's tackle. my concern. Yeah, he, he's he's a project. So. Yeah. Oh, uh, what else? Um, <laughs> John Lynch was interviewed and asked. If uh, he had talked to the Steelers <laughs> yeah. about Brandon Ayuk and he's like, oh, come on. No, no, no. But then it was interesting that Brandon Ayuk sent something out on, did you see this tweet on Instagram yeah. or his thing on oh, Instagram yeah. where he was like, you know, with pictures contradicting. Yeah. It looked like it said Lynch money talks bullshit yeah. or something like yeah. that. So there's something yeah. there. He can divide, he can. Oh yeah. It all. Oh, we yeah. can, he- we can hope anyway. Lynch tried the old uh, GM talk and uh, yeah. Ayuk was like, yeah, I don't fucking think so. No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then the other thing you got to think of is is Ayuk using the Steelers to bump up the money with the 49ers. The leverage. Maybe. Yeah, he's using you know that. Hey, Mike Tomlin, I look to get, look alike, huh? Wink, wink. Pay me more money. I don't know. Uh, it, that's the move that can rescue this offseason. I feel a lot more. I feel a lot better about this team if they bring in Brandon Ayuk, and then that ships so. I you think so. It's it's over. Yeah. Uh, they still need a two None for Lynch for teams. Lynch for Lynch to come out and say that. Yeah, but what else is he going to say when you think about yeah, it? Right? He's going to go back on that after coming out and saying we never, you know, would never trade. I, to... yeah, well, he, he could say, well, he... you know, the negotiations turned for the worse. We had to do something. I, I mean, he could, but I mean, after already coming out and saying it and saying it the way he did. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't see that now. I think I should sell. I mean, it's possible. And if this, this rookie wide receiver to rookie center. So let me ask you this question and say they sign Boyd. Do you feel better or, or not? It's, Do you think he can be a good legit two? He's never been a two. He's always been a three. Yeah. So what, what do you think? Do you think that? Yeah, I feel a little better if Boyd is the slot veteran slot with Pickens and a drive. I feel better with a first round pick, but I'll settle for a second round pick. And then, then it's not so bad. And you get a little depth. Maybe Watkins or Van Jefferson hit, and you still got Calvin Austin, so it's a little deeper. Yeah, I could feel all right about that. Like I said, man, I mean, for some reason, they're definitely going after speed guys, Jefferson and this Watkins guy to group yeah. with Calvin Austin the third. I don't know. Maybe they think if they got three, four, three guys with George Pickens, maybe maybe there are some mismatches there that they could take advantage of. Yeah, I, it's I the only thing I can think of. That's two guys for three spots, basically. They're going to compete with each other. Or like they're One's thinking gonna Russell's going to sling it. Let's give him some speed guys to him well, to yeah. sling it to. Yeah. I mean, that is a strength, throwing the ball deep downfield. That's one of his so major strengths. It makes but... me wonder if that's if that's the route they're going. They're adjusting some things to their quarterback room. If Maybe, I was and Calvin I'm, Austin, I'm I wouldn't be feeling good. No. If I was Calvin Austin, I wouldn't be feeling good right now because no, they brought I... in two fast guys to compete with him. I would not buy a house if I was him. Yeah. I would I definitely rent. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get over to the Mike Tomlin press conference he had today. He talked to a bunch of people. Um, he had some good news on Cole Holcomb. He said he saw the doctors. It was positive. Uh, he's still a long way away from playing. The hope is maybe by training camp he might be ready, but there's no guarantee of that. Ugh, right? I don't like that. Um. If at some point he ends up being able to play and they have Patrick Queen, him, and Roberts, that's a nice – and that's the other thing. There's no depth at linebacker if Holcomb can't play either. If, if they could get him back by July, I'd be happy. Yeah, or even by September. If he can get ready for September, he's ready yeah, to play Yeah, I just – I don't know. I wonder if he's at some of those players. It takes them a little while to really – from they've never been specific on what exactly the injury was. I know, I know. It's been too. it was apparently really bad. Yeah, pretty because, bad. You know, um, he talked a lot about Russell Wilson being the number one guy to start training camp. He also talked. Mike Tomlin talked about 
there will be competition once it gets going. He was pretty, I thought he answered the question pretty well. He's like, Wilson's the veteran. He's going to be the number one guy, but we're going to let, you know, Justin Fields compete and we'll see what happens when it all you plays know, out. The media is really pushing this agenda of like Fields could still start. Did you notice that? I've been seeing get pushed by a lot local around here and mainstream of, well, you know, Fields might still be the one starting. It's like, dude, Tomlin just literally fucking said, Wilson's the number one and, and, and Fields is the number two. What, what are you talking about? And, but they really seem to be pushing that. Have you noticed that? Well, there are people that like Justin Fields a lot. I think he's a starting quarterback in this league. And I think that's part of it. He's talented. He's young. Well, yeah. I mean, look, I like the head, I like him too, but I'm not the fucking head coach. Like yeah, they literally he, said he's the number two. So I don't know why they keep pushing this whole thing that I don't know. He might come out of, you know, training camp as the starter and all this other shit. And I'm like, what? I, I I almost feel like they're, they're trying to drive drama. Like, Oh, it's, it's coming. Dave. Like, it's coming. It drives me fucking insane. Cause I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? They already Tomlin on purpose for there not to be drama already came out and said, <laughs> who the hell the starter is and who the hell the backup is be done with it. Like, I don't know. It's very strange to me. And I, you know, I hate that kind of shit. I really do. But it's, I was literally, when I was on the way, to pick my son up um, after his baseball game, uh, literally on the radio, a guy was like, I think Justin Fields starts at the beginning of the season. <laughs> and this was a, this was a guy that's media. That's in I mean, it's possible, also. Dave. It's possible. I mean, Justin Fields is, He's a pretty good quarterback. I mean, he's not, obviously they both have warts. They both have their downsides. My he's, my thing is too the way we're acting like Russell Wilson was so bad, and I'm like, no, I don't think he was. He was that bad. I don't, I don't think, think he was, he was that, that bad. bad. I mean, he, he wasn't. He was okay. I mean, he was a lot better than what we had. He wasn't we, elite, we but he wasn't bad. He was no. good. I, I I put him in the middle of good, and yeah. he, I can even make the That's case for better than good. However, comma. I just, it doesn't make sense to me. They act like he had this horrible season when he was top four in touchdown to interception ratio, had a higher passer rating than Mahomes. Like his wide receivers were dropping the ball at the time. You saw that video yeah, yeah. of how many drops Judy, who the Cleveland Brown morons gave a huge contract <laughs> yeah, to. They did. Like he, he was dropping tons of passes. What was Ru Russell Wilson supposed to do? You know, like it just, to me, I told you that team sucked in Denver anyways. Mm. So I don't think he had a supporting cast very well at all in general. So I think he's going to surprise people. I think he's going to do a lot better uh, than some of these other morons in the media are, are acting like he's going to be. Oh, Dave, just wait till he has his first bad game. Oh. Just wait. And, just that's, wait. But see, and that's my, like, that's what pisses me off. The pitchforks are already fucking out. Yeah. And my dude hasn't even yeah. started a damn. People are taking game sides yet. already. People are taking sides. Jeez. I mean, you know, I, I, it just, it drives me insane, Dave. Cause it's just like, bro, like, if you look at, remember how I looked into, I looked into all these fucking things. If they would just do that, I, I, maybe then, unless there is like an agenda here, I don't know what it is, but it's ridiculous. I don't, I just, I think, well, I don't think I know. A lot of people in the media do not like Russell Wilson. He's not a well-liked guy around the league. Yeah. We talked about it before they, before. Hey, uh, was it Darth Sniper? Mike M brought up, uh, he just put, plain and simple, Quran. Amagaji, the offensive tackle out of Yale, I think it is. Yeah, yep. dude. If they could get him in the third round, I'd be happy as shit. Yeah, I worry about the competition being from Yale. You know, they don't play anybody, so I still think he's better than, than Dan Moore. Well, that's a low bar, but yeah, <laughs> you're better than Dan Moore. I'd stick you out there, Dave. Uh, you wouldn't. You wouldn't take a snap behind me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you would not. <laughs> anyway, uh, what else? Um, he said that Kenny Pickett requested the trade. Yeah, and they accommodated him because they real... basically had Justin Fields yeah, almost worked in, out in the hopper. Yeah, I got real problems with Kenny Pickett's competitive competitiveness, man. He he. Oh, Darth Sniper's doubling down. He says he will be a Pro Bowler. Bet on it. I wouldn't take that bet, <laughs> there, Darth. I would hold 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 yourself there. Hold your water. He's, Darth, he I'm with a, you, buddy. I got a good feeling that he would definitely in be better. Ivy League. Let's settle he'd be down. better than Dan Moore. Let's put it that way. Anyways, we've gone. This is Yale we're talking about. Um, yeah, like I said, I have real questions about 
Kenny Pickett's competitiveness. You didn't want to compete I know. with a 35-year-old wide receiver coming in off the street. Wide receiver? You know, I mean, what? Huh? You said wide receiver. Did I say wide receiver? I'm sorry, quarterback. Yeah. Coming off the street? I mean, come on, man. Yeah, because like per the media, this guy sucks anyways. So <laughs> why in the world did Kenny Pickett just be like, this isn't fair. I want to leave. <laughs> That's what yeah. he did. That's what he did. Like, and it's what and he's, he did the same thing late last season. I don't want to be the backup. I'm not going to dress. You know, we're seeing a side of Kenny Pickett that we didn't, you know, we were <laughs> sold a bill of goods that this guy was uh, Mr. Yeah. Football and, you know, this and that. No. Kenny Pickett, the villain. He turned into one. Uh, he, Mike Tomlin also said Deontay Johnson didn't request a trade. Which begs the question, well, why the fuck did you trade him? Because you need him. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm totally confused with this Deontay Johnson. I don't understand it at all. Yeah. He says we wanted a player, so it was a player for a player. Player for player. And it's Are like, you kidding me? cool. Have you ever heard of player value? Yeah. One's value is... was way more than the other. Just because they're making the same amount of money doesn't make them the same kind of talent. Like, I don't know what. I don't know yeah. what they're nope. like that there. Cool. Deontay Johnson didn't want traded. That's cool, man. That's good to know that he wasn't like Kenny where he was like, I want out. I want nothing to do with Pittsburgh Steelers. That's great. You still don't give him up for only a sixth and a guy that hasn't done jack shit since 20, what, 17? Like it, it didn't, this was a horrible trade. They got rid of some of the money, which is great. I'm glad that that, that dude did come yeah. and take a pay yeah. cut. Thank you. Appreciate that. But like, that's it. They got $5 million in cap space. Bro, I was okay with them trading him for, like, Sneed and, yeah. and you know, stuff like that. But to get only a six form, how do you get more for Kenny Pickett than you did for fucking Deontay Johnson? Well, you know, Mike Tomlin's argument will be, well, we got the, we got the corner. He loves the corner. This has Mike Tomlin written all over it. He's in love with this corner, Dante Jackson, and – I'm telling you. <sighs> I mean, he's head over heels in love with this kid. Yeah. And I don't know why. The kid might have been impressive when he first got drafted. And I don't know why they gave him that bad contract like they did down Carroll. I have no idea. But I'm sorry. There, I, I'm not happy about this. I, I thank God that they cut the, the, the contract in half. So that it's kind of, you know, salvageable a little bit. But not enough for me. Like, because now look what, look, look what situation they're in. Now they're fucked. They got they got nobody except for guys that can run four three with zero production. Yep. Oh hey, all these guys are coming on here. Uh, Steelers freak. The sports media is following the regular media. Division plus drama equals more cash for the talking heads. The Wilson versus Fields discussions will continue. He's oh, dead yeah. on. That's You're exactly right. what it is, huh? and I That's couldn't agree happen. more with you. Steelers freak nailed it. Uh, Darth sniper. Uh, yeah, the DJ answer was confusing as hell. Ex agreed. Uh, he put, I really think Mike Tomlin just gives us politically correct answers and has been doing it so often. He doesn't care if he tells the truth. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks that I, I do think these guys stop believing that will believe anything they say. And they just, as long as they say it. A <laughs> little bit reverse it. psychology there. A little yeah. bit. No. Uh, wow. Uh, I get why you trade Deontay Johnson. He's in the last year of his deal. He doesn't really fit the blocking type of receiver that you want. Blah, blah. Is Des, Des Watkins a blocker? Quez, no. I'm sorry, Quez Walker. Um, is Van Jefferson a block? Maybe a little bit better than DJ, but Maybe. he's not like that's not his strength. I mean, I don't know. And you find out Lajaria Sneed went for what a third and a fifth, and you're like, Oh, I've been waiting for you to get to this. I've been waiting uh, for you to get to why this. Why didn't we make this move? Yeah, it was too yeah. late because you have they they have Dante Jackson. So I don't know, man. I, I just and isn't it a future third and fifth? It's not even this year's. Yeah, it's not even this year. Like, what are we doing here? Like, I get the, the contract. I don't even know. Did they did they announce the contract for for um, Snead yet? I know he wants a lot of uh, money, and he's going to be expensive. And that's I the one remember, drawback. I can't remember if they did. Is it? I mean, is he the one that's going to want in the ninety million dollar range? He's he's going to want twenty million per because that's the going rate for a top corner. So I guess that's the reason. Ooh. You boil it down. I don't know. If it, had, it had to be money. There's no way it had to be money. <sighs> I'm sure they could squeeze it in. Maybe and this is what I'm worried about. They have too many irons in the fire here. They they want Ayuk so they don't get Sneed, and then now all of a sudden Ayuk stays in San Francisco, and then you're screwed. You know they they wanted a center, but they're too busy playing working on the quarterbacks, and now the centers are gone, and now you screwed. I, I don't know. I'm starting to worry about this off season. 
Really there's am. some restructures that need to be done like right now. They need to restructure like it's not the right money. now. They, they they have those restructures in their back pocket. I'm they saying, do whatever they want. yeah, but, but I'm saying if they want to make these trades, then they need to get the money freed up, like now, get it done so you know it's there and you can figure this out and make one of these trades happen. Well, now it's too late, but I mean, unless they really do want to keep going back to Iuk again or whoever. But that's my I, that's my hope that they're holding out for Iuk and I think they can get him. But is that does that know. cost them Legarius Sneed? Probably, probably. Um, we talked about Arthur Smith um, controlling the game with the bigs and all that bullshit. I mean, Arthur Smith is the perfect guy for Mike Tomlin. Perfect guy. Oh, These guys are going to get heaven. along great. They're going to get along great. That's, it, that's good and bad. I mean, it's good that Mike, he, you know. They have he crazy. literally admitted that they didn't have to do their due diligence in looking into him. Did you hear him say that? I, I missed that. Like, he literally... It was something to the to the point of we really didn't even need to look into him. He's like, we did, but not we didn't really have to. It was almost like all he had to do was talk to a couple of his buddies that worked with Smith, and he was all in. It I mean, they played Tennessee plenty of times. They knew they knew Arthur Smith. Well, they played Atlanta once. Yeah, they knew. Yeah, all the Steelers connections from Tennessee. We talked about that, all those head coaches that played for Pittsburgh. So that coach in Pittsburgh, I should say. So he, they knew him, and it's a perfect fit. Whether that's good for the Steelers going forward, we'll see. I mean, uh, what else did Tom talk about? He They asked him about Roderick Jones moving the left tackle, and he was as noncommittal as you can possibly be. It's like, yep. they're not moving him to left tackle this season. They're just not. It's not happening. Unless something crazy happens that I'm not, that I'm not seeing. I don't know. Hey, we got Arthur Smith. Yay. <laughs> I'm so happy. Remember, you got me happy about this. I, I we they, they're gonna be dynamic and they're gonna put up points. Well, I never said dynamic. No, 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 no. I'm not quoting you. <laughs> no. I'm saying that's what Tomlin said they wanted. And yeah, let's let's see how that goes. Oh, uh, what else? He said something. They asked him about moving on from the um the, the uh, strength and conditioning coaches. And he gave some weird answer that, you know, we're trying to get younger and it only made sense to bring in new strength and conditioning coaches to, that can work better with the younger players. And I'm like, well, I guess. Well, <laughs> I, I get it. Cause like, I kind of do get it though, because what if those guys were older and, and they're in their, they're not with the new on how to do things nowadays that can really help I mean, yeah. athletes. But I think the real reason why a lot of this happened is because of all the injuries. I think that's more, more lots likely. Lots yeah. of, what yes. was it, hamstring or groin injuries, like a lot of soft tissue injuries, a lot more than you're comfortable with. And it's happened quite a lot with the Steelers, if you think about it, Dave, off and on the last couple of yeah. years. Yeah, so you're right. You're right. I think that was the main reason. I think they were like, okay, there's some reason why we are constantly having these soft tissue injuries Yet other teams, it's not like that. It's a mixture of stuff. Why is it constantly that? So I think there's different routines that some younger guys maybe that are you know in the new with that they had these guys do to help them, and they want that. So that's why they went this route. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I think the injuries more than anything. And you probably don't want to throw those guys. And, the and, bus. and look, I'll, I'll give the Steelers credit. I'm not going to shell them completely with this stuff. I give them credit. They're trying. They went and yeah. got a guy who used to be a head fucking coach to be offensive coordinator. So now we know we have a capable offensive coordinator. Great. Plus, night and day from Matt Canada. Right. Night, night they, they, they went and got a new quarterback coach. You know, they, they told what's Sullivan, Hey, you're going to be an assistant, whatever, you know, thanks. And, you know, they went and got a new guy for that new wide receivers coach who demands you to be a certain way, which is really I like good. Higher. I like that. Yes. Higher. So, and, and, and you know, they've added some other guys and now they're doing the conditioning thing too, and getting new blood in there for that too. Cool. They're, they're trying, they really are. Now they write, eh, I don't know. I'm not feeling good about something. <laughs> but hey, they're trying. So I give yeah. them credit. You know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But man, I, I don't I don't know. They asked Tom about the, the kickoff rule, and that's gonna change. That's I like the um what was it, the USFL one where they have to stay within five yards of each other till the ball is caught. Then they Are can they stop doing blocking. That? Oh, they're doing that. They're voting on it. 
they haven't they haven't decided yet. They're going to vote on it today or we, tomorrow. That's another thing we got to talk about is them voting in this this uh, hip the drop hip tackle drop thing too, bro. That is fucking ridiculous. Uh, how the fuck are defensive backs and and, and middle linebackers going to bring down some of these behemoths running around with the ball? There's no way. Like they're they're literally turning it into flag football with this bullshit. Let a guy just not think and tackle. Like it's it's instinct when you're tackling a guy and you can't bring him down to force down to get him down. Yeah. So I guess there's something about they're worried about the points that Alpha is up. Is. Something it about is. it I was, was gonna 49. Tell, I was gonna say that. This season was 43 and they can't have that. A difference of six points. Calm the fuck down. Like the points are down, uh, geez. offense is down, so they're gonna make some rules to, to try to get to make it harder on the defense, which is just fine. I get the, the greater idea that you want points to score. That's the that the league people want to see. But you, now you're putting another subjective rule to these fucking incompetent refs. Oh and you can do a hip drop tackle, but you can't do a twisting hip drop. It's gonna be a fucking it's gonna be chaos. It's gonna and, be a shit and show. To be honest. It's not the referee's fault. That's too much on their plate. It's too much yeah. on their plate. Yeah, right. Stop and like taking I said, some of these dumb freaking penalties away. When Don't a guy more. Is, when a guy is trying to tackle someone, say a uh, uh, a Henry, right, King Henry, yep. and, and and a defensive back or comes Najee. up, or or Najee, right? Their their brain mentally ha- makes them want to sink down to pull them. It's a of mental course. thing. They're not going to be, dude. They're going to have to be like a robot out there. It's not going to work. Like I don't, I don't know where they think it's gonna work. It's gonna be penalty city every oh, fucking yeah. game. Oh, every yeah. fucking it game. It already is. It's gonna be worse. It is. And the players' it's association biggest. didn't d- did not want this. They were unanimous to, that, that they didn't want this passed, and the league said no, we'll pass it anyway. There's other ways you can, uh, you know, change the rules to get more points. This is not. This is not a good way. This is not a good way. And as far as the kickoff thing. Are you froze, Dave? No, no, I'm still. Uh, we got more. Co- no, no. <laughs> we got, they got. They got more comments. I was. I was reading. I right, got read. Read a couple more. Uh, Sailor Shriek said Smith used two tight ends and two wide receivers of the Titans. I assume that went into the DJ equation. I think they have a plan to fill the holes. Time will tell. Uh, they better have a really good plan because it ain't looking like it's going real well right now. Um, I mean, Darth Sniper, uh, Mike M. Put. Graham Barton, I've seen his name, said yeah. he knows he is being looked at as a center by most teams and feels he will have no issues making the transition. Didn't they say it's a Kendrick Green? I I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Should we take him into more consideration? No. Uh, Dave doesn't like that. He played left yeah, tackle Darth last Sniper, uh, He also played, especially since he falls in between JPJ and Frazier's on the mock list? Yeah, what? he does. He does. Barton does? Yeah. he's He's probably... Center is he field. listed as an IOL on the on yeah. the box? Yeah, he's not in the center. Okay. He's not in the center okay. thing. Okay. Okay. That's why he played left right. tackle last year. He played center, I believe, his sophomore year. And okay. he got moved to left tackle. So he's he's done it. And everyone projects him. I've heard people say he can play anywhere in the line. Depending uh-huh. on who drafts him. Sure. Does it sound familiar? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. If a team needs well, a guard, well, they're going to draft him as a well, guard. Well, in his sophomore year, he played it four times. I mean, that's plenty, right? He's I mean, a talented he's, kid. Yeah, plug and play. Give him Pouncey's number. Whatever. Yeah. He's 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 more talented than Kendrick Green. He's better than Kendrick Green. Is he a surefire center? No. I mean, no. So he, he would be, be a really good – what is it he usually plays? He's a guard? Well, he played left tackle last year. but Left tackle. They don't think he can play tackle in, in the pros. Some, some do. Oh. So would he profile more as a guard then if he's smaller? I guess he's got shorter arms and he played Gosh. interior early. Sounds like a-, a lot of people say center. A lot of people say he's going to play center. We'll see. Do they? But do they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've seen it a lot. Now, again, Darth, I'll, I'll tell you what, Darth, I'll look into it. I'll, yeah, I'll look into it a little bit closer with this kid and see and make my own, uh, you know, yeah. assumptions on what I think this kid could do. But thank you for the recommendation. It'll be interesting. I don't know if Duke's had that pro day. But if Mike Tomlin should happen to show up at the Duke Pro Day, you know he's in play at center. Um, another question you have to ask is: Do they go to West Virginia's Pro Day? I know if they go to if they go there, which they kind of usually do, right? Because it's so close. They to do. Home. It's a it's right in their backyard, dude. So you hop on seventy nine and just drive just south for an hour and you know, some change, and you're there. Yeah, 
I don't see Zach Frazier being the 20th overall pick, man. I just, that's what worries me. You're going to, you're going to bypass on say Mims or somebody like that because you're so in dire. And that's you know the thing. They, they brought the whole franchise down to the Georgia day. So like, yeah. you gotta be, you're going to be telling me they're not eyeing Mims or, or I don't know. How would you feel if they drafted Mims, a wide receiver than Van Pran? I I take it. You take it. I take. It. I think. Yeah. I think Van Pran is good enough to plug and play. Yeah, it's borderline. I, it, it's close. It, it's, it's, it's close, close. But if you get Mims on top of it, plus who yeah. did you say in the middle? Yeah, Mims first, a then receiver? a wide receiver. I take it. Then yeah, I take it. Mims is that then, good, and Van Pran I think is good enough and could develop to be a really good. Then you've got almost a whole damn Georgia line yeah. from two years ago together. Which worked out pretty well for them. So, but then you're starting a second year left tackle, a rookie center, and a rookie right tackle. That's trouble. Why would you have a, a rookie right tackle? You just wait. How'd you say again? Well, because you're going to bump Broderick to left, correct? Left. So, a second year left tackle. You're okay, drafting second, a, a yeah. rookie center yeah. in the third round. I mean, and but a rookie this is right the, tackle. But this is the corner they backed themselves into. Dave. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, like, absolutely. it's this or you just suck. Like, I don't. You know, <laughs> I I think there'd be bumps and bruises, but offensive lines they have bumps and bruises when they start before they start gelling anyways. Yeah. So I I really wouldn't worry about it as much. Even Dar Sniper agrees 100. percent I would take yeah I would say. Van Pran yeah. is 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 like your last possible plug and play center on top of getting Mims and a wide receiver to be your number two wide receiver. Yeah, I'd go with it. I'd take it. I think that's best case scenario to be honest with you, like a yeah. Mims or a guy in right. Right. As a tackle, but and then in again. the third round, that other third pick, hope a corner drops. Yeah, and there's one of those corners that you can still grab too, as well. And let's not forget here. And I know, and I, and I, I get it. But Corey Trice did look really good before he got hurt. Now you don't yeah, want to rely on that because on yeah, you, you he's injury that. prone. Yeah. I know. I'm just veteran. saying, like, I think that they do like him, and I think that's why we might not see them take a corner till the third maybe fourth round uh, is that's the reason why. Yeah. Um, they love Dante Jackson and, and Dante and, Jackson because yeah. apparently he's great. And, and so, Darius, yeah. They have Darius rush again. He's going to be a special teams guy. And then we'll I see. I was going to bring him up corner. too, but I don't, you know, I don't know. They have him in dime packages already. And have yeah, him off the bat, they put him in dime. Yeah, but he did <laughs> yeah, well. well. Yeah. He played. All right. talk, he did really well because of uh, defensive backs coach helped him. I can't remember who it was, but that's who he credited for. It. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Like they've kind of got a shit show going on right now with some of these positions, and I they they better fix this coming into the draft. They had no choice. Look, I want them to draft best player available. It goes better that way. However, comma, they really really need a center wide receiver. Or shit's gonna get bad. That's so, the problem, Dave. Man, if they don't sign a center. And you're going with – you have to draft center first round. You have to. You can't You, you can't wait. risk Van Pran not being there in the third, and then you scream. You wait till they, they start – the freaking they are going to get be, Green back. They are going to be blowing up Herbig like he is oh my God. so legit and I mean, ready he could, to be, roll. he could be decent. Who knows? <laughs> Who the fuck knows? They had oh, all such a risk. season to give him a shot at center. And they didn't, they right? And they didn't. They let like, Mason Cole play the whole time. the living shit out of me. You're like, you picked Cole to keep going instead of giving Herbig a shot. What does that say? Like, you know, and Mason Cole are they that bad. stubborn? Mason Cole was bad at the end of the season. He couldn't snap. He couldn't block. So what's what's the better scenario? JPJ in the first round, wide receiver, then a tackle in the third? Yeah. Why but, bother? Why bother doing a tackle? Look, you Anybody know, you draft look, in the third is not going to beat you, out Dan Moore. You know that JPJ is like my my draft crush. Like I think this guy's legit, yeah. Pro Bowl ten year guy, right? Like, but you know, to get him, I'm I'm happy with it as long as they can still nail some of these other positions. So, you know, because we talked, you know, you had your little thing there where you said it's not a prime position, and people you know bitched about that or whatever. Um, I, I'm fine with it with him. I, I think Frazier's a reach at 20. That's where I I'm do at. too. I do too. If Coming take, off an injury. 
if they take JPJ, that's not a reach. I th- he is the best no, center in the draft, he, yeah. hands down. But yeah. if you take an injured center who's the number two projected center who's supposed to be for a second round pick, then I'm not happy. Yeah, I I equate that to taking you know when they would freak out and they took an Artie Burns because you know their guy they wanted wasn't there. Yeah, or when they took uh, Senquez Golson in the second round, he was a projected fourth. Like. I can't stand when I see their player values way higher than everybody fucking else's yeah. on a player. Yeah. So those are the kind of things I don't want to see happen. If Cause look, I, I like Frazier. You'll got to talk me into it. I'm a WU guy, but yeah. I know his value and his value is not picked 20 overall in the draft. So yeah, he's not a first round guy. He's just not. But again, if you have nobody, <laughs> <laughs> He's looking pretty good at 20 because then if you pass him, that's the problem. Here's where I see them take him at 20. Someone takes JPJ before 20. Yeah, which could happen. I've seen yeah. him mock to the Seahawks. Yeah. I guess the Seahawks yep. in the center, a couple teams. That's what I'm center. saying. Because think about all these centers got, got snagged up in free agency. There's other teams that might think they need a center. So it could happen. They should have spent, I hate to say it, and maybe Bradbury's not the, the best center in the world, but they probably they probably should have spent the money on him versus Patrick Queen. I mean, did was linebacker the, the big need? I mean, obviously Holcomb's hurt. There was a lot of other guys. Willie Gay well, went and I think, nothing. I think, but I think that's what happened with, with Cole Holcomb and the uncertainty. I think they kind of panicked a little bit. We're like, okay. And I told you this. They needed to get young at linebacker. I told you this. You got a guy that's yeah. only 24. Dude, no, I don't. I'm yeah. not arguing that that Patrick Queen's not a good player. But they paid him. No, no, no. You're arguing the money. The I'm money. saying they panicked and overpaid to make sure they got that young linebacker that they need. And he's also going to be the best linebacker on the team. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. yes. Well, yeah. we'll we'll find out. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, he probably, probably is. He's got to be. I just wish they spent the money on a tackle. I don't know. Ask Ravens fans. They go, this guy sucked ass. You know, he's horrible. Oh, yeah. Con Smith is the whole reason why he did anything. Yeah. It's like, dude, I'm looking at stats here. And the stats show this guy was a tackling machine that could actually go after the quarterback, too, if you want to blitz him. Is, I saw a video of him knocking dudes on their ass to go make a tackle. Well, I, what I saw, I liked. So I don't I know, He's going to be a good player for the Seals. There's, there's, no, there's no getting away from that. Um and there really wasn't a premium center that they missed. Like there wasn't like a Pro Bowl center out there they could have signed. But Bradbury was pretty good. Um, I didn't like Mitch Morris that much, but now looking back now, <laughs> I would have been happy as shit if they did sign him. Um, because now I don't know. Yeah, uh, Darth Snyder put on here. All my best mocks come out come out when I trade down and get an extra second rounder. Then taking Frazier doesn't seem like such a reach. See, and that's why I'm telling you. And I don't yeah. know if Darth Sniper saw this or not. That's what I said. I'd rather them trade out. I really would. Um, Steelers freak said Sh- Shazier needed void needed to be filled. That's why they went and got him. But I mean, yeah. geez, that's that's like seven years ago. Yeah, they've like, tried a million fuck. guys to fill that. And maybe, you know, especially Tomlin, the way he plays defense, maybe he felt like he had to have that kind of guy. He had to have yeah. a young, dynamic guy. So it is what it is. I mean, like I said, I am not down on that signing. I just thought the money could have been spent better on a different position. I mean, you could have gotten a guy. I know Willie Gay's not as nowhere as good as you know Patrick Queen, but he's pretty good. And he went for like two million bucks a season. Yeah, you know. So, and you could have gotten your center because um, I just it all boils down to I'm worried they're going to you don't bypass. like you don't like what they prioritize money wise. No. And I, I'm worried they're going to bypass a really good player in the draft because they need a center so bad. You know, yeah. Brian Thomas Jr. or Mims or, or somebody like that's going to be there. And they're going to, like, well, we're fucked. We got to take JPJ or, or Zach Frazier or we're screwed. I know. I, like I said, I'm okay with JPJ. I think, I think that dude is legit the best center in the class. So it doesn't bother I'm okay me with as it. much. I, I am. I mean, yeah. especially now at this point. Yeah. It's almost you have to, right? You have to. <laughs> they don't. They don't got a choice. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he comes in for a visit too. That's the other thing. He hasn't come in for a visit either. So they haven't spent very little time on Joey uh, Jackson, Powers Johnson, Johnson. Powers Johnson. 
they've they haven't spent much time with him, so I don't know where the interest is there unless they're playing. Coy. Hey, look, I could be completely off. That might not be the they're not planning on going after him at all. They could be going after Mims or Guyton or is it Fanatu, the other uh, yeah, right tackle? Uh, Fuatanu. We got to learn these yeah, names. It's going to be right. Rough. Yeah, still is <laughs> still sanctuary vocabulary. Yeah, one on one. Uh, you know, one of those guys or a wide receiver. It could be a wide receiver. It could be one of those guys. Maybe they are going after them first. They don't care. You know, they're going to take their chances and keep gambling and wait to hope to get Frazier in the second. Or maybe Van Brand is the target. You know, in round three. I, you know, I I don't know, but I don't know either. I know what I would do. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I, I like a trade down idea, but then again, you're trading down, and then somebody good falls, and you're like, "Fuck, we should have stayed at 20. You know, I think either way, you're going to see something's not going to go right. In the end, they're going to they're going to miss <laughs> too out many holes. Something. There There's is too many holes. Uh, uh, Dar Sniper asked, if, "Did they show interest in Van Pran?" Well, they all, they were all at Georgia's pro day. I was going to say the whole, the whole franchise went down there, you know, to to Georgia's pro day. So they're interested in somebody or a bunch of buddies. Like this is what that. And way. when you break when you break down the Georgia people, it's Mims would definitely pique their interest. The tight end kid is going to be gone before they draft. Yeah, they're not going to so be. So it won't be him. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. They don't Mims, have Van Pran, the safety. Uh, Tyke Smith there. Yeah. yeah, actually both. Um, both of them I think are in the draft. There is two, two good center. The other one far, drops down farther though. I think they're um, the running backs. Um, they don't need any running yeah. backs. And they don't have any wide. So it's it's the, the oh, wait, it's corner. Line. Don't they have one corner also? Oh yeah. Um, do they have a corner? Or I'm thinking of Alabama's. Yeah, I don't Never think mind. they have a, a big time corner in this draft. Kool Aid McKinnistry is Alabama. Isn't he? Alabama, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Wiggins. Alabama. Wiggins is Clemson. Clemson, yeah. So yeah, it's those offensive okay. linemen. Maybe Van Pran is their plan in the third round. That seems risky to me. <laughs> a will he be there when they draft? And B, Tomlin and literally admitted there's only a couple plug and play centers. He used my verbiage. He did. I forgot to bring that up. He did say that. He said there's only a couple. He he admitted it. Like. That's a big implication that they know <laughs> they're aware of Which what good, centers yes. are plug and play. And but he I also said in so many words, don't worry, we have Herbig. <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. Uh, it's it's I hate to be so negative because he has done some good things, but it's a mess. They've painted themselves in a real corner here. Yeah. yeah. And how they get out, well, we'll see. It's this time. But again, I keep talking myself in circles here. There's time, but there's no there's no free agents left. So you're gonna have all the time in the world. There's nobody left to sign. I saw somebody bring up the uh, Rams center. Is he so a free agent or somebody yeah, sign him? Yeah, I think so. He's coming off an injury too, though, and he's yeah. But you're you know, look, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, like that's very true. Is it Brian Johnson? Is that his name? It, I Brian think Allen. it is his name. Brian Allen. Yeah. So if if he's okay, if he's an okay center, go get him. Again, I think Mason Cole. Is ranked what better? Is one of the top? Yeah, I think he was. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I can go by the PFF free agent centers, but I don't think it goes down that far. <laughs> I think they only wrap the, rank the guys that are worth it. <laughs> really, that's bad, man. Uh, you're not, you're so bad, you're not even ranked. Yeah, like, they didn't. Geez. They only go like ten deep, and none of those guys are in there. Oh, I don't know, Dave. It's yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not good. I know. It's scary. Here we go. Here's the centers that are left in the market right now. Cody White here, who's 31 and not very good. And he played guard, not center. Connor Williams is injured. Brian Allen. Mason Cole. A uh, couple guys that played guard. Scott Quesenberry from Houston. Never heard of him. Yeah. Connor McGovern, I've heard of. He's kind of old. I've He's heard 30. Of him. Chris Reed is a guard. Hold on. Tyler Lawson, 32. Never heard of him. Jonathan Harrison, 32 also. He was in Miami, so he's a backup. Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. Pat I F line. I've heard of him. 29 from Arizona. Corey Levin. JC Hassenhauer. My man. Let's run it back. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's bad. They're not getting, well, Maybe they will sign one. Maybe they will sign Brian Allen and pray that he plays decently. They're gonna. They're gonna. That's probably what they're gonna do. They're gonna go get Allen and draft one. Not sure when or how, but yeah. You know, I, I 
if they had Brian Allen on the team, at least I feel a little bit better. If yeah. they go in the draft and they miss, at least they have somebody. Right. They can play right. this year and then they go get center next year, I guess, in the draft. Right. Look, they might be That'd preparing be to draft whoever they want in the first round and then trade up in the second to get Frazier. That could be another plan they do too. That is probably what they, they'll need to do if they really want Frazier. Yeah. Because the wait to 50, it's not going it, to – anything could happen, but it's not likely right. that he's going to be there in the 50s. It's just – They're trading up to draft the center. They the they're not going to they're not gonna have to give up – they're not going to have to give up that much, though, Dave. I don't no, think you're going to give round, up. If you have to go up ten picks, it's not that bad. Right? They're not going to. They're not going to like have to give up like, a, like another third or something like that. They're not going to do that. Yeah. Probably, um, probably a sixth. One of their six, maybe. Maybe. Depending on how high up in the second round you want to get. Right. I mean, the, the Steelers were asking for a well, lot. Well, and that's two, a good point. Three. It does depend on how high in the second you're trying to yeah. go. That's not. That's, that's that's a good point. Yeah, if you want to get up five or ten spots, maybe. But if you want to get in the early second round, yeah. If you're trying to get in, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. All right, Dave. That's all I got. Unless you got anything else? No, not really. <laughs> right for a center anytime soon. I got, I got it all out. This, I had to, I had to get all this out, man. Just, just yeah. oof, I feel it's that's like a, like a therapy, therapy session. session. Yeah, exactly. Getting here and I let it all out, and I feel so much better. <laughs> Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at steelersex16. Email the show at daver at Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to us on YouTube. That helps us out tremendously. Uh, Dave, give me your stuff. Let's get out of here. Yep. Find me on TikTok at um, uh, Steelers Sanctuary Podcast or at Steelers Pod. Find me on Twitter at DMC3SSP. Don't forget, guys, I got the uh, sports books on signupexpert.com backslash nothingness for the uh, Hodgepodge Nuts podcast that I just started back up again. So give it a listen if you're a Pirates fan. All right, check out Dave's baseball podcast if you have a chance. And until next time, thanks for listening to the Steel of Sanctuary podcast.